First up, uh, Andy Morris from EVMWD. I do like microphones as well, very much so. They're hard to get away from me, so thank you for the time. Um, today I'm here representing Elsinore Valley Municipal Water District as Vice President of the Board. Elsinore Valley has spent a lot of time recently, in the last six or seven years, going to Washington, D.C. and Sacramento. Recently there's been some Facebook blogs and things <coughs> questioning why the Water District is you know, spending time in Washington, D.C., and I thought it was probably time that we at least educate people as to what we're doing. And I think it's important that we get out as much in the public and sort of tell the story about that. So tonight I just wanted to bring you guys up to speed on that. Elsinore Valley Municipal Water District has worked diligently to establish solid working relationships in Washington, D.C. and Sacramento to influence legislation and pursue grant funding opportunities to ensure it continues to provide its customers with a reliable, affordable, and safe water and wastewater services. Maintaining an active presence in the government arena and leveraging the district's role in the region is absolutely vital to our efforts to protect our imported and local water supplies, enable the development of new local water supplies, and secure millions of dollars in grant funding benefiting all the district's customers. The district's federal and state advocacy efforts over the past decade have produced many tangible and measurable results, both in terms of locking in long-term personal relationships, as well as expanding federal and state funding opportunities, including overall grant efforts totaling more than $20 million. Getting in the door with the federal agencies and key staff at all their various levels, Washington, regional, and local, is very important to our grant efforts. It has been having an ongoing face time with the decision makers and key staff, resulting in real value for our local residents. For example, the district has set up meetings with the Bureau of Reclamation, the Los Angeles and San Francisco offices of the United States Army Corps of Engineers to discuss water and sewer projects or plans to improve our ecosystem in Lake Elsinore. The district has developed these relationships over the past decade, which helped set, the, set us apart from many other local water agencies who simply do not prioritize this kind of effort. Securing funding for the district project is highly competitive, and, and the success is typically achieved by making a strong and compelling argument for the proposed projects. Here's just a brief list of some of our successes recently. The California Department of Public Health grant for $4.5 million for the county water project, which you guys are all very well of here in, in Wildemar. The Bureau of Reclamation grant authorization of $12.5 million for recycled water projects. The California Water Resources Control Board of $6.4 million grant of low interest loans for advanced water meter replacement. And just recently, $7 million of loan forgiveness for the re reclamation facility, which a lot of our water here in Wildemar goes to in, in Marietta. The district recognized that in order to achieve this, you know, we need to build those relationships. And so we really thank you, the city, and the staff for all your help and what we've been able to accomplish. Thank you so much. Thank you, Annie. I have a Dameron McVeigh for Just Yoga. Okay. <coughs> Did I get that first name at all? It's Damien, but Damien, that's close. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and this is my husband, Mike. Hi. Um, unlike these guys and the kids, I don't like microphones. I'm used to talking to people in a dark room where everybody's moving or standing on a foot or something. So if I start to get nervous, if you could move something or stand. We, we can use the exercise. It's okay. Thank you. Yoga exactly. That makes me. If you do this, I feel better. Yeah. Um, I'm actually just here. We and I met you already. Hi, sweetheart. Um, we own a studio in Corona called Just Yoga. And we've been there about seven and a half years and love it. It's the best thing in the world. And in a couple of weeks, God willing, Creeks Don't Rise, right across the street in the Wildemar Square, we're opening our new location, and um, which we're so excited about. Um, we are going to have starting 30 classes a week. We have unbelievable prices right now. We're offering a pre-grand opening special that is almost 60% off, um, which is crazy. We also always have a two a new student. I'm doing that for you. Thank you. <laughs> we have a new student special, which is always two weeks of unlimited classes for only $25. That's 60 classes. 
for only $25, thank you. Um, and a lot of things, I want to kind of break the mystery of yoga. A lot of people think it's like we sit in a room and we stretch and we breathe and we um, and that it's only for girls and it's only if you're 20. Um, yoga's for everybody. Our, our current students range in age from 60 to 90s. We have people that do crazy arm balances and handstands, and we have people that just meditate and stretch. Um, benefits are, I do not have enough time to explain the benefits. And it's not just for girls, it's for everybody. And so, um, I don't know, do you have anything to add to that? Not really. I don't want to keep you guys here too long. We're right across the street, right next to the Habit, and there is a big grand opening celebration on the 24th of March for the whole center. We'll, we'll be there. We're going to be giving away free t-shirts, free bumper stickers, classes, um, all sorts of stuff. And you can go on to, we have an app, uh, it's just, just Yoga <laughs> Corona, and you can also do our website. You can see the Wildemar specials that up until so probably a week or two are, are going to be almost 60% off. So, pretty good deal. And uh, we're so excited to be here. It's going to be great. And what about the community class? Great way to unwind. Oh, um, we do always offer three classes a week called our community class. Thank you, Miss Bridget. Um, they're always $5 because we always want everybody, regardless of your income, be, to be able to practice. And so we've got some in the morning, some at night, some on the weekends. So no matter what your schedule, no matter what your budget, you can still come and play. Any other questions? Do you have to be flexible? No. As a matter of fact, the, the more flexible you are, the less you need yoga. <coughs> if you're tight, you need to do yoga. If you're super okay. flexible, you should probably be doing weights. Okay. So if I love that I'm not flexible. Come yeah, see I can't me. Touch toes, so. um, <laughs> I can make you touch your toes very quickly. So, and I don't believe in can't. The moment you tell me you can't well, do something, you usually owe me a dollar. I donate hard that to Jerry. Without pants. <laughs> Rule in my class: no can't. And I did. I know I'm more. Um, I know that um, <laughs> that can't is a bad word for me. And when I started charging students for using it, I got six thousand dollars that I donated to charity the first year. Wow. I did wow. charge for it. Well, so. How much a dollar? A dollar every time you say can't. Yeah, 6, cans. So I got 6,000 cans. People know I'm serious now, oh, and I charge you double if you don't pay me, and so now I don't have as much. Anyway, thank you guys so much for allowing us. I took advantage of that special, so I bought my 25, I think, passes. So. 25, and I think it's 6, 7. So the same thing in my class. Half, yeah. So we're excited to be here, and thank you guys for allowing us to talk. Thank you. Great. Oh, and I have schedules. Do you want Warren Roosh. On down one. Good evening. Um, I wanted to talk to two th about two things, public safety and police protection in the city and lack of uh, city staff response to phone calls. Uh, I've lived here since 2008. I've been robbed or broken into three times in my house. Um, my neighbors have also been robbed on each side of me. Mailboxes in my area have been broken into and the sheriff or police seem to do nothing about it. Uh, last Saturday before last, my house was broken into at 3.50 in the morning on Saturday morning. Uh, my neighbors saw the break in through their, through their window, called me, I heard it, I got up and I think I scared the two people off. So they had them on camera, a uh, lady across the street uh, on the corner, uh, saw the people running to the car, saw the car, could identify the car, got the partial license plate of the car, and uh, uh, said that she could identify the two people on identity. So anyway, the um, thieves got away, uh, the police took the report. Uh, the next morning my neighbor was driving around the neighborhood because his camera saw where the car came from. The car was parked in the street. Uh, and he called the sheriff, the sheriff came out, he knew the car was there. The following morning, I went out for a walk. The car was on that street, parked. I called the sheriff. He came out. Uh, he called me back. And he says, I'm in front of the car. I'm photographing the car. Uh, but there's nothing much we can do because uh, uh, you can't identify who was driving the car. Uh, that's ridiculous because the, the person across the street could identify the person. Plus, they didn't even impound the vehicle. It was used in a crime. So there's really something going on wrong with this city's police. Um, so that was one issue. The second issue I have is um, the city's staff's lack of response to phone calls. I called the city's manager's office 
and I, I, I can't get anybody to, to answer the phone. I called the office. I left a message three times, three different times in the last week and a half. They asked them to call me back because I wanted to know how many police patrolled the city at any given time. Never got a call back. I think that's just unacceptable. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is I called the street maintenance department because the street light on the corners out is a very dangerous intersection. There's a lot of people go through and they all seem to go right through the stop sign. And that's where the, the fellow was parked under the street light that was out. So I reported that. I wanted them to change it. I asked them to change it. Got no response. Street light's still out. We can have uh, so Can you tell us where that street light's at? Yes, it's on the corner of Charles and Frederick Street. Charles and Frederick. <coughs> Gary, have you gotten any voicemails? No have you gotten his calls? or? I've gotten uh, a couple anonymous calls with no phone numbers left and no names left. If there was a phone number left or a person's name, we, we turn the call within one business day. Okay. But if there's no name left and they're anonymous, I can't return the call. I have the date and times. So I didn't bring them with me. There's and we have these recordings. Calls. Well, I tell you, I call from your office. I'm sorry, sir. Tell you what, why don't you, uh, if you go on the city council website, my phone number's on there. Okay. If you want to get it off there, give me a call and come on down and let's have a meeting. We'll talk about these things. Thank you. I but appreciate also, you coming down. Just then. wanted to mention Edison actually is the person for the streetlights. It's not actually the city. So. Well, I, I contacted the street maintenance. Right, but Edison is actually the person that would um, <coughs> replace the bulb. You're saying to let the street lights out. Actually, Edison comes and fixes that. But we could turn it in yeah, for you. We'll turn it in too. Yeah, but pretty dangerous intersection, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for coming much. down. Appreciate it.